This should be quite interesting. You know, parents, sometimes kids have to learn the hard way, right? You want me to stuff all this paper down your little mouth? <laughs> okay, here you go. That's it. Now what are you going to do, huh? What are you going to... Oh, William, this isn't the trick I showed you. Did your mother teach you this? William! Where did you learn this trick? Oh. The verb. television or something, someone's going scuba diving and they have a scuba tank on and they always fall backward into the water. Have you ever wondered why they always fall backward? Because if they fell forward, they'd fall back into the boat. <laughs> now you know what a hula? Think about it. You know how to hula? against the other. These things are very, very light. It goes into the air. And all you gotta do is catch it. Ugh. below. That means we need to keep our eyes focused on Jesus and on what his word says. Not on our situation, not on our circumstance, but what does God's word say? His word says that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us and that God causes all things. Everybody say all things. things. Now say it like you mean it. He causes all things to work together for the good. Not all things are good, but when you put it in God's hands, he will allow it and change it and mold it and and help it to become all that he wants it to be. He will cause all things to work together for the good, for those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. So what we need to do is, number one, we need to know that Jesus Christ is right here, Lord of our life. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus, not on our situation. That way, no matter what we face, No matter what challenge, obstacle, situation we face, when our eyes are on Jesus and we know what his word says, we will always. 
This ball here is going to represent God. This is going to represent you and me. The middle ball is going to represent sin. Just like the green ball can't get to where this ball, orange ball, is because the purple ball is in the middle, we cannot get to God because of our own sin. Our sin separates us from God. But God so loved the world. Yeah, he gave his only son. He said, sin does have a price, but I'm going to pay it for you. And so Jesus, having known no sin himself, came down, paid the ultimate price of sin, which was death on the cross. But the good news is the story doesn't stop there. Because on the third day, he rose up from the dead, defeating the power of sin and restoring the fellowship between man and God. But look, there's a gap here. God will not force himself in any person's life. The Bible says, draw near unto God, and God will draw near unto you. A lot of people are like this. They, they know Jesus died for their sins, but they've never allowed him to come into his life. That brings us back to the first point. You either know God or you don't know God. You've given him your life or you've never done it before. A lot of people here say, well, you know, I thought about it, but I never really did it. Before I call pastor up here, and we're going to be praying for all the kids, if there's people here that have never had that opportunity to give Jesus Christ their life. Our son gave his life at age four. I know adults that gave as early as age three, and they're still living for God. They didn't go through terrible teens. It was, all, of course, reinforced by their parents. So we're going to go to prayer right now. And all we're going to do is say, God, I know that I've messed up. I need you to come into my life and make me a brand new person. Pretty much that's all. If you have never asked Jesus to be Lord of your life, you pray this prayer along with the rest of us, and God is going to do just that.